What the? Foresee the strongest job creation in modern times. We inherited an economy on the brink of a Great Depression. Millions of people losing their jobs, losing their homes, but even more importantly, losing hope. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? The only Great Depression you inherited, Joe, was our collective depression when you and Barack Obama were inaugurated 16 months ago. Yeah, you heard me right. You and Barack. You're not fooling this guy. Nope, no way. This is the third Obama term. We all know it. Making false promises of unifying the country, which you so clearly had no intentions of doing all along. But this, I see we progress to the next stage of dementia, the blatant lying. Now, what's the congressional Republican plan? They don't want to solve inflation by lowering your costs. They want to solve it by raising your taxes and lowering your income. Their plan is actually made working families is going to make working families poorer. Unbelievable. He has no idea. No, Joe. Joe Biden's got 99 problems, but the truth ain't one. The king of disinformation was officially anointed this week. So, King Joe, is inflation Putin's fault or is it Republicans' fault? I'm so confused. But, dude, I do now understand why they let Joe Biden out of his napping cage. I don't. I can't figure it out. I know it's hard not to stare at a car crash. We all rubberneck. You all do it. But have you ever noticed when Joe Biden is unleashed, have you paid attention to the nervous stares of the people next to him and behind him? But this week takes the cake. This week was the pinnacle of, uh-oh, he's talking again. The number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we build is inflation. Look, you've heard me say it before, I'm a capitalist. I'm not out to punish anybody. I know you got to be frustrated. I know. I can taste it. What? What? You want to know what it tastes like, Joe? It sure doesn't taste like chocolate chip ice cream, does it? I'll tell you that much. Mr. President, what did you order? Chocolate, chocolate chip. Tough questions. Great job, media. Or maybe it tastes like baby formula. I don't know. I'd let you know, but I can't find any dang baby food. Oh. I know where I can find some, at the border, apparently, where there's a fully stocked detention center. Isn't that nice? America's last again, folks. Kamala, border czar. Did you know you could find baby formula at the border? Of course you didn't know that, but you would know if you'd ever been to the border. So Joe Biden thinks that our strength is inflation. Our strength is inflation. Well, if that's the case, then we're the strongest country in the world right now. Oh, and you want to see what it means to be the opposite of America first? Here you go. And our farmers are helping both on both fronts, reducing the food cost of price of food at home and expanding production and feeding the world in need. Wow. Wow. If you wondered what America last looks like, you're seeing it now. If you wondered what Americans lasts look like, you're seeing it now. Joe, you can barely manage to feed Americans and give them, give us what we need, let alone feed the world. Why on earth are our farmers feeding the rest of the world? Ask the Davos bourgeois Soros set to park their jets and feed the world. Or maybe ask John Kerry to cool his private jets for a year and feed the world. Yet another sad week for America and for everything we hold dear. Our president is either dishonest or delusional, or worse, and more likely, he's both the king of disinformation. This isn't America first, or even America second or third. This is America last in the liberal leftist flesh. This country isn't safe for its citizens, day or night, inside or outside. Even the judges of the nation's highest court aren't safe in their own homes. The national education cartel is relentless. Our children continue to be subject to leftist indoctrination on the down low. Don't tell your parents. Here's a coming out closet. I'm queer, aren't you, Billy or Susie? Well, why not? Did I mention don't tell your parents? Okay, good, it's between us. Us gals, he, she, they. Guys, I'm not even sure. 
Even as they continue to be found out, these episodes continue shamelessly across the country. And the left, oh, the left, they think that what worked for them in 2020 will work again for them in 2022. Their radical little formula. They seized on an event. George Floyd's murder. Got it. That helped them promote their extreme ideological goals. They knowingly misrepresented uh, the famed famous liberal rebrand, and they stoked public fear with the help of a very willing and compliant liberal media complex. They mobilized a massive and at times extremely violent mob that intimidated anyone who might stand in their way. And they involved the corporate and tech world to whip up their product placements and algorithms to sway any possible opposing public opinion. Right, Twitter, Facebook? And all of it gets hammered home, justified, paraded around by death. I use that phrase, seemed to work for them on purpose. It created enough of a fragile, fearful climate that voters were convinced. And of course, as we all know, they also managed success by hiding a major, very serious, very damning, icky, sticky, tricky story of a drug addicted son of the president's very icky, sticky, tricky business, his ties to our adversaries overseas, but I digress. So now they found a new rallying cry. The leftist mob is at it again, this time threatening, intimidating, and outright illegal protesting outside the private homes of the Supreme Court justices. They only like democracy when it works in their favor. But if not, they bring flames to our streets, mostly peaceful. Make no illusions about what the left is up to. They've said so in their words, plain words too, by the way. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. <laughs> He's not even scary. It's just Chucky Schumer. The relentless and often violent Black Lives Matter campaign of two years ago ranks up there as one of the most effective demonstrations of political activism that many of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. The far left launched a massive campaign of disinformation, their favorite word again, of intimidation, of moral blackmail, and of outright fiery violence, no matter how they tried to frame it, mostly peaceful. They used the murder of a black man by a police officer to create a narrative that <clears throat> the U.S. is intentionally, institutionally depraved. And then they heaped blame onto then-President Donald Trump and helped elect leftist progressives who've destroyed our country with their agenda. The leftist progressives have done an immense and amazing amount of damage to the country, to our citizens, and to every single American. And what's worse, they now have a president and Congress that have been eager advocates for their wider cause. Oh, but not for long. And now, here's the new campaign. Ready for this? The campaign to save Roe versus Wade. The result of a leak, no doubt leaked by someone looking to destroy the sanctity of one of the highest and most important institutions in the history of this country. And the release of the outcome of a discussion still in progress has led to unprecedented pressure on the justices to change their minds. Illegally, I mind you. Let me tell you a thing or two about the kind of people who post maps on social media with the home addresses of people they don't like. They're like the same kind of people who tell fabricated stories to the government, who snitch on their neighbors when they don't like them, so they can be sent to northern Russia or China's Chinese prisons. We know the kind of people who show up outside homes to intimidate, but what are we to make of it when the White House, that only, they don't know, we refuse to condemn such illegal behavior, but in fact encourages it. If the White House were merely silent on this, that would be like giving it consent. Mm -mm. But Jen Psaki confirmed that, yes, the president's position is to support illegal protesting. So I know that there's an outrage right now, I guess, about uh, protests that have been peaceful to date. And we certainly continue to encourage that outside of judges' homes. And that's the president's position. Yeah, we continue to support an illegal activity. The president of the United States continues to support something that is federally illegal. Think about that for a second. How dare they dance their dramatic performances about January 6th? The left's blatant efforts to undermine the Supreme Court's deliberations with the resolute permission and even encouragement, by the way, makes Biden complicit. 
and it makes a mockery of their own condemnations of January 6th. But the more they fail, the more they rebrand, the more they create their fear and fiction. You know, disinformation. The Democrats are already writing a fictional movie of a world after a Supreme Court ruling on Roe v. Wade, a ruling which hasn't even been issued yet, a movie of their version, their version of reality, and their co-conspirators in the media are bound to help them spread that message. This is the don't say gay bill fiction all over again. They say next, they'll come after interracial marriages and gay rights are no longer safe. I don't know where they got that. And they're banking on the hope that their lies, their rebranding, will save their hides come this fall midterm elections. But you can't cover up the pain of filling up gas tanks. You can't hide that. Americans now faced with making the choice of whether to fuel their cars or their homes, of whether to feed their kids or make their mortgage payments. America. You can't cover up the pain of this dystopian America where desperate and panicked parents can't find baby formula to feed the kids. But boy, oh boy, do they try. Their attempts to smear the conservative movement are front and center. The ultra MAGA agenda. The other path is the ultra MAGA plan put forward by congressional Republicans. But the fact is, congressional Republicans, not all of them, but the mega Republicans, I never expected, let me say, let me say this carefully, I never expected the ultra mega Republicans who seem to control the Republican Party. Yeah, okay. So now it's not just MAGA, it's ultra MAGA. Didn't you know? Well, thanks for that rebrand, actually. I kind of like the sound of it. I don't know. I kind of wear it as a badge of honor. It's code for common sense and what's right for America and Americans. And if that's the case, I wear it with pride. Ultra MAGA. Call me. It. Fine. And now Trump is apparently the great MAGA king from one king to another. Under my predecessor, the great MAGA king, the deficit increased every single year he was president. No, he doesn't even get it. This guy is so out to the, out to, in, the in the weeds, in, in, the, in the forest. He doesn't even realize that MAGA is not a, a badge of dishonor. It's America first. It's a badge of honor. There's so many voters in America, Joe. So the king of disinformation is handing out titles now. Heavy is the head that wears the crown of lies. He inherited the war in Afghanistan, and it turned out to be an unmitigated disaster. He inherited the border, and it turned into the worst disaster in decades at the border. He inherited COVID and turned it into a way to control Americans in every single way, body, mind, freedom. And now a million Americans are dead, and they're the living proof. They lied, and people died. Actually, dead proof, sorry. And he inherited an economy slightly battered by an epidemic and turned it into the worst inflation in half a century. Joe Biden, the king of disinformation, folks. How long do you think it will be until we see prices coming down? I'm not going to predict that. It ranges depending on which economists you're talking to by the end of this year. And some say it's going to be it's going to increase next year. But there's others say by the end of this year, you're going to see it come down by the calendar year. I don't know, but I know what we have to do to make sure that we can bring it down. You don't know, but you may not know, but you may know. Six and a half percent when he said that, eight and a half percent now. Anyway, Joe, I do know. And every American knows what it takes to bring it down. A red wave is fall. This fall is no longer an option. It's a dire necessity.